This yogurt could give you insulin resistance because it contains a prevalent zero calorie sweetener, but there's a metabolic loophole, a surprising quirk of metabolism that based on human randomized controlled trial data could let you consume this sweetener without the ill effects. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the data, highlight the metabolic loophole, and present you with a provocative question or two that will leave your head spinning. So pick up a spoon and let's dig in. Welcome to my channel. Stay curious. So these data were published in Cell Metabolism, a top tier journal. And in the first experiment, they took 45 healthy adults between the ages of 20 and 45 and randomized them to one of three groups where they consume either a sucrose or regular sugar sweetened beverage with 120 calories, a sucralose sweetened beverage with zero calories, or a combination where they had sugar mixed with sucralose for 120 calories. And they consumed these drinks seven over just two weeks. And the researchers measured markers of insulin resistance and also brain activity via functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI. So the initial hypothesis that the researchers were going into the study with had to do with uncoupling, uncoupling of sweet taste with energy supply. And they hypothesized that the uncoupling in the sucralose sweetened group would lead to metabolic dysfunction and insulin resistance. But their initial hypothesis was wrong. Contrary to the uncoupling hypothesis, they found that there was insulin resistance induced by the combination of the sucralose and the regular carbs, the regular sugar. So now I'll get to the so what of these data far more quickly than I usually do for my channel, if at all, if you've been following me. But the so what, these data suggest that consuming sucralose alone is not sufficient to induce insulin resistance, at least not in two weeks. However, when sucralose is paired with carbohydrate calories, probably in particular high glycemic carbohydrate calories, it can produce insulin resistance, even in as short as two weeks. And the real world application of these data is that often sucralose and other zero calorie sweeteners are consumed in mixed meal context, say as a diet beverage alongside a meal, or mixed in to carb containing foods like the yogurt, the light and fit yogurt, or the light and not so fit yogurt that I provided as an example. So these data suggest that consuming sucralose in this way with carbohydrates, high glycemic carbohydrates can induce metabolic dysfunction, insulin resistance, versus consuming sucralose without consuming carbohydrates, as in many low carb products, something like a keto chow shake, may not promote insulin resistance, at least not in a short time frame. So that's the metabolic loophole. And I hope you think it's pretty cool. I certainly do. But just to be clear and caveat, that does not rule out potential other negative effects of sucralose, either when consumed over a longer term or with respect to effects that were not measured in the study. But yes, based on these data alone, a keto chow shake containing sucralose is far less likely to promote insulin resistance than say a light and not so fit yogurt. But now for some more data, because you didn't think we were done, did you? The researchers also performed a similar protocol on a group of adolescents ages 13 to 17 years old. And the rationale for separating out this younger group was, and I'm reading this from the paper, since adolescents go through a period of transient insulin resistance, this is during their growth, a time of increased preference for sweet beverages and of intensive brain development, especially for the dopaminergic circuits and prefrontal cortical circuits, they wanted to select out adolescents during a critical period in their neurodevelopment. And strikingly, they found found that the effects on insulin resistance were so profound in the adolescents that the experiment was actually terminated on ethical ground. They write HOMA IR, a marker of insulin resistance, levels elevated from less than 3.5 to greater than 12.9 in two of the three of the participants. Yes, it was a small study, but nevertheless, two of the three had these massive jumps in insulin resistance, and it was driven by increases in fasting blood plasma insulin levels. They write, we reported this adverse event to Human Investigations Committee, which recommended trial termination. So bottom line, the effects in adolescents, even though it was a small group, are so profound on inducing insulin resistance, the ethical committee had to basically terminate the study, which I think is pretty shocking for something that is considered generally benign, sucralose. Another thing they did in this study was look at brain activity via fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging, which is like a video of the brain. And what they found was that higher insulin levels, higher insulin area under the curve was associated with less activity in mesolimbic systems, the dopamine reward systems in the brain, which is really interesting. Higher insulin, less dopamine reward system activity. 
Hmm. And this brings me to the two major questions I have spinning off of these data beyond the so what that I already brought to your attention. The first has to do with mechanism. What is the mechanism that explains the negative effects of the combination, the sucralose plus the normal sugar that is distinct from the sucralose alone? Is there a common underlying mechanism promoting peripheral insulin resistance and changes in brain activity in the dopamine reward systems? Or is it a bottom up mechanism whereby peripheral insulin resistance affects the brain or a top down mechanism by which brain reward circuitry affects peripheral insulin resistance. We don't know. These data open up the question, but that is an area for future provocative and really important investigation. The other question I have has to do with the critical period in neurodevelopment during adolescence. Can artificial sweeteners, zero calorie sweeteners, ingestion during a critical period in neurodevelopment negatively wire the brain for life? Can it promote top down insulin resistance that sets the stage for metabolic disease later in adulthood? These are some really important questions, and I hope they get investigated in future research. So I hope you found this interesting. And if you want more on this topic, I really encourage you to check out a prior video I did on neuropod cells and gut sensing beyond the mouth of sucralose and normal sugar. And above all, stay curious.